Stars Bedtime Story. With a sweet storytelling, have sweet dreams. Hello, my dear friends. How was it today? Did you have a happy and good day? For your good and sweet dreams, I will read you guys stories. Now, close your eyes and let's go to the dreamland. The story for today is Grateful Ant. Once upon a time. One hot day, an ant lost its foot and fell into the pond while wandering around the pond. Splash! Help the ant! Help me! Help me! The ant screamed by pawing in the water. However, no one can hear it. At the moment, one peasant sitting on the willow noticed this pity ant. The peasant picked the willow leaf and threw it to the ant. Hey, ant! I will throw the willow leaf. You can climb on that. The ant can safely back to the ground with the willow leaf's assistance. The ant said, "Pigeon, you saved my life. I will never forget your help." The pigeon thought that. This small ant has no ability to return his favor, so she flew above the willow tree with a flap. A few days later, when the ant was working hard near the pond, and it saw a hunter trying to shoot the peasant. Pigeon, here's the hunter! Run away! Run away! The ant shouted, but the pigeon cannot hear what the ant said. As the ant was eager to save the pigeon, so it dashed to the hunter's foot and bit it. Ouch! What's this? The hunter who tried to shoot the pigeon dropped the bow and arrow with a loud scream. The pigeon was startled by the sound and flew away by flapping its wings. Thank you, aunt. You saved my life. No need to thank me, Pison. You saved my life first. I was more appreciated. Today's story is Redbin Potridge's grandma and a tiger. A long time ago, in a very rural place, the time when a tiger could speak, there was a grandma plowing in a farm all by herself. She was called Redbin Potridge's grandma, 
as she was brilliant at cooking red bean pottage. One day, in the middle of the spring, she was working hard, sweating, filling the red bean field with a hoe as usual. Yes, the red bean looks nice. I should cook a red bean pottage once it is red and ripe. And as soon as she stood up, unfolding her back, a giant tiger showed up and yelled, "Roar! I'm starving to death, and I'm gonna eat you right now!" She was shocked and tumbled. "Oh my! Please, I'm begging you, tiger. Can you save me for just once?" She was begging hard, and her body was shaking. Please be generous. Who would take all these red bean fields here if I die now? I promise that I'll cook delicious red bean pottage in winter for you. So please, at least wait for me until that time. Then you could have delicious red bean pottage. Then, then you can eat me. Tiger took a moment to think. Actually, the tiger really liked the red bean pottage. Fine, sure, I'll only wait until then. Tiger went on his way, licking his lips. The wind was blowing, leaves were falling, and finally, the winter came with heavy snow. On the early morning of the winter, the grandma. Was cooking the red bean pottage while sighing again and again. Oh no, I guess I'm dying today. On a cauldron where red bean pottage was boiling, the teardrops started to fall. All of a sudden, a chestnut came and asked, "Grandma, why are you crying when you're cooking this amazing red bean pottage?" I am crying because I know that tiger is on his way to eat me, and I'm scared. No worries, Grandma. I'll help you. Instead, please give me a red bean pottage. The grandma nodded and kindly gave a bowl of red bean pottage to a chestnut. The chestnut ate it deliciously and hid under the fireplace. Once Chestnut disappeared, Grandma started to cry again. Then, a turtle crawled to the grandma. Grandma, why are you crying here? I'm crying because I'm going to be eaten by the tiger today. I will help you. Just give me a bowl of red bean porridge. The turtle also ate it deliciously and hid inside a water pot. The grandma started to cry again, and this time, a dung beetle was sliding down and came next to grandma. Hey, grandma! If you give me a bowl of red bean pottage, I'll help you as well. The dung beetle also ate it deliciously and stayed at the corner of the kitchen floor. This time, a gimlet hopped in. And ate a bowl of red bean pottage. Then he stood right up on the kitchen floor. Next was a straw mat, which lied on the floor, and finally, a luggage carrier ate the red bean pottage and hid behind the door. When the night came, as we all would imagine, the tiger showed up. Grrr. Grandma, I am here as we promised. Grandma was frightened, but said, "It's too cold here, so wait for me next to the fireplace. If you stay there, I'll give you a bowl of red bean pottage." When he slowly came into the kitchen and sat next to the fireplace, the chestnut jumped right into the eye of a tiger. Gush, my eyes! Tiger covered his red swollen eye and put his feet into the water pot to wash his eyes, and the turtle 
beat his foreleg. Gosh, my legs! Tiger, jumping up and down, and stepped on the dung beetle on the floor and fell down. Oh my gosh! And when he was sliding down and falling, the gimlet stabbed Tiger in his butt. Gosh, please save my life! When he went outside, the straw mat covered his whole body, and the luggage carrier carried the straw mat and ran into the well. Take this! Over the deep well, the straw mat untied itself, and the tiger fell deep into the well. No! Help me! On the very night, the grandma said, Thanks to all of you. You guys really saved my life. I'll be more than happy to give you delicious red bean pottage every year. She was smiling and ate a red bean pottage with chestnut, turtle, dung beetle, gimlet, straw mat, and luggage carrier. Today's story is about the wisdom of a rabbit that defeated the tiger. It was a cold winter day. It was so cold that the animals hid. Deep in the mountains, a foolish tiger had not eaten anything for several days. So, it was very hungry. Mountains were covered with white snow all over, so no matter how much he looked for prey, he couldn't even see the animal's tail. The tiger has been searching for prey through the hills for days. Roar, I'm starved. I'm hungry. My legs are hurting. I'm so weak that I can't go looking anymore. But that's when a rabbit ran past from far away. Wow. What luck. I was just getting hungry. The tiger's eyes were wide and ran quickly to catch the rabbit. Roar, gulp. What a yummy look. Where do I eat first or swallow all at once? But the rabbit he caught was the smartest and the cleverest one in the world. How tricky. All the animals used to stand in line in front of her and get the wisdom. As expected, the tricky rabbit calmly told Tiger without a blink. Oh, Tiger, as a matter of fact, I was looking for you. A what? You're looking for me? Tiger, the hungry king of our mountain. I was about to grill honey rice cake for you. Why don't you have some? The word honey rice cake made the tiger smack his lips at a gulp. No, you came up with honey cake for me? By the way, is it delicious? Then take the lead. The rabbit guided the tiger to the pebble field. The rabbit lit a bonfire and threw round pebbles into the fire. Oh, I forgot honey to dip in the rice cake in. I'm going to get the honey jar, and you should never eat it because it's cooked red. Roar. I got it. All right, just go and get back. The rabbit jumped away with a smile. I'll be right back. But when he saw the back of the rabbit hopping away, she danced joyfully. Oh, bunny, you're dancing for delicious honey. It must be delicious enough to dance. After a while, the round pebbles were red hot. The stupid tiger said, I'm hungry. Should I try one? 
The tiger mistook a big piece of pebble for honey and swallowed it all at once. Oh, hot, sick the tiger. The tiger rolled around, shedding tears and shaking his burnt tongue. He was so hot in his stomach that he grabbed it and rolled over again. Oh dear, how dare you deceive me? Bad bunny, I'll catch you. I should swallow it up. A few days later, the tiger got better. He found a rabbit hopping away while wandering around and ran quickly. You bunny, you dare trick me. I'll eat you in one bite. But the rabbit smiled without a blink. I thought you were going to beg for me the life, but why are you laughing? The tiger tilted his head and asked. Hey, <laughs> ah, Mr. Tiger, how have you been? When the rabbit asked with a straight face, he answered on an impulse. Okay, I've been well, but what's the good news? Of course, I was about to eat chewy sparrow meat. Would you like to taste it too? The tiger smacked his lips at the word of sparrow meat. He was excited to eat sparrow meat and followed the rabbit again. Okay, tiger, I'll chase sparrows here. You open your mouth wide, and when sparrows comes up, just swallow them. He thought to himself after eating the sparrow meat, he would have the rabbit for dessert. After a while, he heard a sound. Oh, I can hear sparrows flapping their wings. I think the rabbit guy chased a lot of sparrows. I have to open my mouth bigger. He thought that many sparrows are flying, so he was excited and opened his mouth wider. But sparrows was nowhere to be found, and a hot fireball flew into the tiger. In fact, the sound of was not the one of sparrows flying. But the one of the fire burning when the rabbit lit the pampas grass field. The wind blew, and the flames gradually moved toward the tiger, and eventually, his body caught fire. The tiger was so hot, and he ran and jumped here and there, barely putting out the fire. The more the tiger thought about it, the more angry he got at the rabbit. Couldn't stand it. You dare trick me again, this nasty rabbit! I won't let it go. The tiger wandered through the mountains to catch the rabbit. Then he found the rabbit by the river. Roar! Did you think you'd cheat me again and be safe? The moment he opened the mouth and tried to eat the rabbit, tiger, shh. Please be quiet. What if all the delicious fish out there run away? The rabbit pointed to the frozen river. The tiger forgot to eat the rabbit again, and his ears got tempted. No, there are so many delicious fish. By the way, the river is so frozen. How do you catch it? It's a piece of cake. Just grab it with your long tail. Everyone grabs it just like that. First, make a hole. The rabbit struck the boulder vigorously. Then there is a round hole. Look, tiger, there are a lot of fish, right? When the tiger looked into the hole, the fish was visible. Oh, so like fishing. I put my tail in the hole and catch it. Oh my! You're so smart. The tiger shrugged and put his tail into the hole. 
If you wait a bit, the delicious fish will hang. I'll bring the branches to light. You must share one with me. Okay, go ahead and bring the branches. The rabbit hopped and danced again. Over time, the rabbit did not return. He later realized that he had been deceived again, and the angry tiger tried to get up to catch the rabbit. But the tail was frozen; he couldn't move an inch. The tiger had a runny nose, sneezed, and shivered from the cold. Oh no! I've been tricked again. The tiger kept whining and pulling his tail, but the frozen river froze his tail even more. Eventually, the tiger finally came out when the river melted in spring. Since then, the tiger has been running away through the hills from the tricky rabbit. The story for today is a shepherd boy. Once upon a time, there lived a boy, looked after sheep of the village. He always felt bored. Ah,、oh, I'm so bored. Is there anything fun? Seriously thinking about for a while, he decided to do something fun. And then he went down to the village and shouted, "A wolf! There comes a wolf! The wolf tries to eat the sheep." Well, what? Where? Where is the wolf? Stopping what they were doing right away, all the people in the village ran all the way to catch the wolf with their hoes, shovels, and clubs. It's just a lie, a lie. I was bored, so it's a joke. It was a lie and a joke of the boy. People warned him and went back. But the boy thought it's really interesting. He did just the same thing. He lied again. A wolf! A big wolf is over there. All villagers came again with the sticks, but. It's a joke again. It's a lie. What a fun thing it is! What? What a bad boy! Will we never be fooled again? People said this and went back to the village in anger. Then one day, a scary wolf appeared somewhere. When the boy was with the sheep in the field, when the wolf tried to eat the sheep, the shepherd boy told the villagers, "Help! Help! The wolf appeared. It's not a joke this time." Hey, boy! You fooled us again. We'll never believe you. Though. He was keen to say, people didn't believe the boy at all. The villagers thought that he lied again and did not come to help. Eventually, the big bad wolf ate all the sheep of the shepherd boy.
The story for today is a mosquito which beat the king of animal lion. In one hot summer day, an animal king lion was taking a nap under the cool shade of trees with wavering its tail. Suddenly, he heard a sound of a mosquito flew around the lion, which was taking a nap. Huh, so you are a king of animal. Well, I'm not scared of you. Grr, what a noise. How dare you, small guy, interrupt the nap of the king of the animals. The lion swiftly attacked mosquito with sharp claws. However, it could not catch small and nimble mosquito. Mosquito stung the lion's ears, butts, and tip of the nose with sneer. Perking, itching, itching and perking. I can't take it anymore. The lion ran away from the mosquito. The mosquito which beat the lion boasted itself. It even started humming. Haha, <laughs> did you see who I am? I am a mosquito which beat the lion. You guys all need to call me Sir Mosquito. I am the king. <laughs> all of a sudden, Mosquito was stuck by something sticky as it was carelessly flying around by boasting itself. Huh? What's wrong with my body? Oh my god, this is a spider web. Yes. The mosquito was caught in a spider web. As the mosquito tried squirming, it got deeper and deeper into the spider web. Help! Help, mosquito! Somebody help me! The scary spider was coming toward to the mosquito from the other end of the web. Gosh, now I'm dying in the spider web. Why did I brag of beating the lion? Help, mosquito! Now, the mosquito regretted its light and stupid behavior. Did you guys enjoy the story of Mosquito which beat the animal king lion? Isn't it funny that the lion tried to escape from the tiny mosquito and the mosquito, which could not even get out a thin spider web, tried to be a king? If the mosquito had not been arrogant, it wouldn't have been caught in a spider web. If we act arrogantly and stuck in illusion, we might not be able to care about the surroundings and end up doing stupid things. Let's promise, shall we? You guys should always act with modesty and should not be arrogant. You guys can do it. Your mom and Karim believe in you. Love you guys. Be happy and thank you.